because it, it's just it's so light. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you are a marketing genius. I think for me, like, do you think they've ever thought of that? I, they I'm probably. Did. It You're it. probably yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to the light whiskeys here. Yes. So I was told on the way here that you have no idea what light whiskey even is, right? Well, it's not that I have no idea what it is. It's just it's not what I thought it was. You can admit it. So I guess that means I didn't have any idea what it was. (laughs) Right, right. So it it sort of is what it sounds like. Um, But I will say this. It can be a little bit deceiving. So for the folks out there who have never heard of light whiskey before, in the 60s, people started to gravitate away from whiskey and they started to prefer lighter, easier drinking spirits like vodka and gin and even blended whiskeys. And so this category of light whiskey was created in 1968 to compete with some of those products. So the idea is that for a straight whiskey, it has to come off the still at 160 proof or below. And that's just because you want that grain influence. You want that kind of chewiness to the product. If it's going to be a, a neutral grain spirit, it has to be, it has to come off the, uh, still at a hun- 190 or above. And so light whiskey is distilled somewhere between those two points. Mm-hmm. So it's full grain, but it's somewhere between 160 and 190. And the vast majority of them push the envelope. They go really, really close to neutral grain. And so it comes off usually at around 94.5. And then it's aged in secondary barrels. And so most Wait, of does the, it always have to be aged in secondary barrels? The vast majority are. I, I again, I, I don't think it's a category. So is that thing. just because the initial barrel isn't imparting that much flavor for a light whiskey? Or I mean, I think it's just because they didn't want to make it overly flavorful. It's not mm, meant to okay. add a lot to the blends. It's meant to mainly stretch out the blends. Okay. So a lot of the stuff you're going to see on the shelf now that's light whiskey comes from MGP and it's remnants of the old Seagram days. So it's 99% corn, 1% barley, and then they threw it in a secondary cask. And they were using it, like I said, to sort of add to and stretch out some of these other products, particularly blended whiskeys and Canadian whiskeys. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't have to be 99% corn. It wouldn't have to be, no. And actually... It, it's the just one the concept Kiz- of distilling it at the higher proof. Right. And okay. the one from Kazuba is 100% rye malt. Oh. So it's Wait, an entire... rye malt? That's what it says on it, right? Is, rye malt. Like malted rye? I can... I guess so. Or yeah. rye and malt. My guess is that it's malted rye. Do they typically malt the rye? You can, yeah. I've had it before in huh. in products. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'll write them and what we can clarify, yep. but that was my understanding of it. Um, Whoa, that smells interesting. They're they're super wow. weird. And so the thing about these is, <laughs> I you're, you're going to get a lot of flavor because most of the most of the time these set in barrels for quite a while. Um, when we get to the high west and the obtainium, we'll talk more about mm-hmm. that. Um, but this one is aged six years, right? Is this a six-year light? Um, I don't see an age statement on it. I thought it was in that range, but... Is this from St. Petersburg? Yeah, this is from St. Pete. I was literally just there yesterday, drinking some St. Pete uh, bourbon. Oh, and, yeah? Or technically, they just call it whiskey. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But I wrote these guys right away because, you know, we wanted to do a light whiskey episode, like, right away. I was like, this is one we have to do because it's just super weird. Nobody's yeah. going to know about it. And it was cool to have one in Florida that's close to us that makes their own light whiskey. And so I thought we'd start with that one. So the the stats on this guy, again, I don't know the age on it. It's 80 proof. Uh, it's a single barrel offering. It says 100% rye malt. Um, and I don't know where they distill it at. I know the next two we're going to get dis- is, comes off the still at around 94.5. I have no mm-hmm. idea where this one comes off. Huh. So... But it is bottled at 80 proof. So mm-hmm. that's interesting because it actually has a, quite a bit of alcohol on the nose. Like the, not not a sharp burn from the alcohol, but an aroma reminiscent of like a vodka. Yeah. Or something of a little bit of nail, va- nail polish remover. Um, a, just a little more of, a, of, um, of the actual like ethanol kind of aroma. Well, you don't have a lot of that grain note. To, right. you know, you're not going to pick up on rice spice. You're not going to pick up on corn. You're yeah. not going to get a lot of those earthier flavors. Yeah. So what you're left with is sort of this neutral spirit in the barrel notes. And so with these, I get a lot more of the barrel notes. And because mm-hmm. it's a secondary barrel, 
it tends to be the sweeter aspects of it. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, but it's got like pops of fruit and mm-hmm. it reminds me a lot of when I was uh, at Lagavulin and tasted the new make Lagavulin fresh off the still where you get some like creamy fruity flavors there, but it all it smells like vodka mixed with that kind of it, it smells like vodka mis- mixed with whiskey essentially yeah. or like um, and or barrel aged vodka or barrel aged vodka which is which is what i was going to bring up is. yeah cuz i i visited um kazuba about 4 years ago probably something like that and it's funny they market this so their light whiskey is under the starkest label and when i stopped there 4 years ago i bought a bottle of starkest I brought it back, but at the time they were marketing it as a barrel aged vodka. And so I brought a sample of that. I had a little bit of that left with me. So I thought we could try it side by side because my guess is they just kept the same mash bill. I didn't see the mash bill on, on the barrel aged vodka, but my guess is they kept the same mash bill and just adjusted, um, the proof of which it was coming off the still and yeah. then just changed it to a light whiskey rather than a barrel aged vodka. So I really dig the flavor profile on this. Well, the next two are probably going to like blow you away then. Beca- okay. Cause here's the thing. Yeah. It, it's 80 proof. So it's a very light on the entry, but this is like so smooth. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now this is one of those situations where I might actually agree with you on the but, smooth thing. But, Cause I mean, that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be super smooth. The thing that bothers me a little bit about light whiskey right. is that if you're there's a there's a certain mood you have to be in to drink a light whiskey. It's a really good summer drink. Mm, it's a good hot yeah. weather drink. But if you want something that's that's viscous, that's chewy, that coats your mouth, this is not the way that you probably want to go. But they're so approachable. But and he- you can see when we get to the obtainium, they can be hot as hell. Like you can make it a really beefy whiskey. Yeah. But here's but, the thing, the finish on this. It just leaves this really creamy mouthfeel, like that just stays and lingers, like it because it's just it's so light. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> you are a marketing genius. I think for me, like, do you think they've ever thought of that? I, they probably did. It. You're probably yeah. <laughs> the thing that I get with all of these is that I always get marshmallows. Dude, Does anybody I was get literally like literally about to say marshmallows? It's like it's toasted like, marshmallows. <laughs> You get toasted I marshmallows. That. I was going to say it's like freaking s'mores. Yeah. Like the yeah. graham cracker is there. The yeah, marshmallows exactly. Are. See, and I was just going to say graham crackers. And all of these, well, the obtainium is kind of hard because you're at nearly 150 proof. But I think you'll see that in the high west too. My classic profile for light whiskey. You know, when you talk about bourbon classic profile, you're always caramel, you know, vanilla, those kinds of things. With light whiskey, it's always marshmallows, graham crackers, and a little bit of like toasted vanilla and sometimes a little bit of coconut note but i don't get coconut on this not one. on this one no i but can't stand me, coconut so usually if get i can right smell away. it i can pick it up right away yeah but for me the the marshmallow and the graham crackers are like spot on when it comes to light whiskey and so i've had this bottle sitting on my shelf for like two weeks and if i'd known you would, there would not have been would, nearly <laughs> so much in here <laughs> right now yeah it's i would have been uh nipping on this you know each night and I mean, this is a, I think a reasonably priced bottle. I think you're in the 30 or $40 range. Oh, really? Something That's like it? that. Yeah. Damn. Most of their products are pretty low. And I mean, you're, again, you're looking at an 80 proof spirit. So I, w- I would be really interested to see them do the exact same whiskey. Well, I guess you said they have a couple other barrel finishes like that they do besides just a straight ex bourbon barrel because i think that's what this is right they only for the light whiskey is that they only do the one finish as oh, far okay. as i know yeah. um because i would be really interested to see this in a sherry cask like in you know just a couple of other things that a port pipe i think that could be really good it, but not a first fill one that would totally overpower it but one that's already been used once or twice to just add that subtle little bit of flavor in there because I feel like this is a very neutral profile. It's it's so not like leaning one way. It's not sweet particularly. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not as sweet as a bourbon typically. It's not as spicy as a rye. It's not as funky as a wheater or a or a scotch. You know, it doesn't have that earthiness. It's just it's this kind of really mellow all around spirit that I think 
could take on different cast finishes extremely well. Yeah, and I honestly, I wish they would release this at a little bit higher proof. Because the, the one I, thing I do like with light whiskey is if you put it on ice, and that's usually blasphemy for me. I hate putting <laughs> stuff on ice. But if you put a little bit of ice on light whiskey, it tends to bring out some more of those marshmallowy notes mm -hmm. and some honey notes. I wouldn't put ice on this just no. because I think it's already watered down enough. So for me, I'm going to put in some like whiskey stones or rocks, yeah. or maybe I'm going to do a chilled glass with it. Um, but I think it's a, just like it is neat. It's a really, really solid product. Yeah. And I will say actually, so this was a fresh new bottle. Um, and after it sat in my glass for a couple minutes now, that aroma of a little bit of nail polish remover is totally gone. So that, that, kind of has gone off and now it's just really pleasant and now try and it I, next I could drink this all day well now try it next to their old version of the starkus so this okay. is the barrel aged vodka and right away you can see a difference in color the barrel aged vodka version of it is much much lighter you know what they distilled the vodka from i have no idea i don't know if it was the same mash bill i i can't remember i've had this little sample bottle Ooh. laying around for a long time that's a good smelling vodka it is i mean as far as vodka goes and I don't I like, like vodka. vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like vodka at all. I like how we said that at the same time. Yeah. I'm like, I like vodka. <laughs> I don't like vodka at all. And so for me, having a barrel-aged version of it was kind of interesting for cocktails. Mm -hmm. It makes a really interesting martini. I could see that. And I could see using the light whiskey as a martini. I think it would be a fun martini. The light whiskey is definitely a lot better. Though. Oh, it's miles better. <laughs> it's, a, it's miles better. There, be, this is what I expected the light whiskey to taste like, though. When you were telling me that... It ha it's distilled at such a high proof, aged in used barrels. Um, you know, I I was expecting it to taste much more like the vodka because this vodka has a little bit of barrel note to it, but it still finishes extremely clean like you want a vodka to. The whole point of a vodka, like a really good vodka, is that it shouldn't smell too much like that nail polish remover aroma. It should have a little bit of flavor. And then a super clean finish that just like disappears. And like, that's what you really want in a vodka, kind of like in a sake or a soju, you know, similar right. concept. Like you might, there's a little bit of freedness there, then it just drops off and it's gone. And the, the light whiskey though is, it's just miles better than what they did with their vodka. I, so, so I think, you know, as, as far as barrel aged vodka goes, it's a good barrel aged vodka. I've had a few, this is a good one, but from a branding standpoint, I think light whiskey is always going to be a little bit more attractive than a barrel aged vodka. Mm -hmm. My guess is this sells better than a barrel aged vodka. And to me, it just, it's better. Like it's just a better product. So, you know, kudos to Kazuba for, yeah. for upgrading that, that brand. I do think though, that as much color as there is in this, you would expect more flavor. If yeah. like, if that makes sense. Now, you know, if you're a bourbon drinker, you're going to look at this and be like, man, that's there's no color in that bottle at all, you know. I, I don't think it's short on flavor. I think it's short on mouthfeel. And that's just going to be the case yeah. with all of these. I mean, if you look at the High West comparatively, the High West is, you know, this is a 14-year. And that's right. not the color that you would expect from a 14-year product. Right. And, and And that's what I mean, just a lack of richness. Yeah. But the flavor that's there is really nice. So I, I would definitely... Um, if I was looking for a light whiskey, I mean, I mean, if I wanted to try it, I would feel no hesitation recommending the Kozuba to somebody to try out, especially at $30. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it's an interesting product. It's a unique product. And um, I mean, unique if you're used to dr drinking bourbon and stuff. Yeah. And I think it's flexible, right? You could drink it neat. You can put some, you know, you can put it in a cocktail. Like I said, I wouldn't add ice to it, but there's a variety of things that you can do with it. 